It's a brand new day. Let's teach your way. It's time for music play. Welcome back to the Music Play Minutes podcast. This episode is also available as a webinar with a handout and a PD certificate. All extra resources, including visual examples mentioned in this episode, can be found at workshops.musicplay.ca. Are you tired? Most of us will experience fatigue after such a long year. Join Denise this week as she discusses ways to make the most of your time off so you can feel recharged and ready to dive into the new year with energy. Hello, everybody. I am Denise Gagne, and the question of the week is, are you tired? (laughs) And we don't even need to ask this question because we know even if you're done school, you are still in recovery mode, and if you are still in classes, you are in survival mode. You're in the deep end of the pool, and you're holding on like this. Um, Our Canadian teachers are going, I believe, till the 29th of June this year. So if you're finished already, please don't be too hard on our Canadian teachers and tell them what a wonderful time you're having now because um, they've got three more weeks to go. In fact, I teach tomorrow. I teach grade four recorder tomorrow. Kids were getting a little antsy last week. I'm expecting more antsy this week, Um, but they were hanging in there really quite well. I would love for you to put in the chat who we, oh, exactly, Linda already put in two days left. Um, put in the chat how um, how many days left, where you teach, and um, we can commiserate with each other. So basically, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, end of the school year comes, and everybody needs a break. And I know there's teachers who teach summer music camps, or they teach summer music school, and they love it. But there's no break with that. And I really feel that everybody needs to disconnect and get a complete break from what they're doing. So I shared in the newsletter some of the things that I will be doing in, um, I don't get a full summer break because there's workshops all summer. Um, But in, in my break in Banff, which is absolutely gorgeous, as long as we don't have smoke from the forest fires there, right now there's blue sky out, so I'm hoping it stays. But I do lots and lots of walking and hiking in Banff. There's wonderful restaurants there and definitely will be experiencing lots of those wonderful restaurants. When I'm here in Red Deer, we don't really have anything that's a, a what I would call a tourist attraction, but we have an amazing trail system. And so husband and I, pretty well every weekend from when the snow's gone until the snow comes back, we walk Saturday, we walk Sunday. And he likes to walk the same trails every week. I, of course, like to walk different trails every week. So we compromise. We do lots of the same ones or we do our favorites over and over again and see as the seasons change. The last walk out, lots of deer on the trails, lots of wild roses, and it's just beautiful out there. Um, I've got uh, a lovely new bike. Thank you very much to my daughter and son-in-law. And um, I get the bike out. And last weekend, I biked down to a concert and, and it was wonderful biking through the trails. And of course, the biking, you can go a whole lot further, a whole lot faster. Um, I've got a summer break planned with the grandkids, and I probably won't even check emails for that whole week. I will be at a resort with two lovely swimming pools. The girls are going to be in pony camp, and the boy is going to be entertained by grandma because he can't go to the pony camp. So again, just a complete change of scenery, a complete change of pace. Um, One of the things we like to do with the kids in the summer is um, pizza picnics in the park. A real picnic would be nice, but that also entails a lot of work. Whereas you go order two pepperoni pizzas and you take them to the park and you eat them. You have the the picnic fun, but it's, um, it's a really, really easy way to do it. I'm also intending to read some books for fun. And I do listen to uh, audiobooks a lot. Um, audiobooks and me don't always get along well because I fall asleep during them. So if I put the audiobook even for 15 minutes um, and set the timer on it, often I wake up and I start the audiobook again and go, oh, I don't think I've heard that before. So audiobooks don't always work the best. But 
reading books for fun. In fact, in two weeks, on June 21st, Artie is going to join me, and we have some friends invited that are going to share some of their favorite reading for the summer, professional and fun. So both kinds of books. Um, I love to take exercise classes, and one of our teachers uh, commented on the Music Play Teachers Facebook page that she teaches jazzercise classes. I'm impressed because I have enough problems just following them, but I love going to jazzercise, and there's a hip-hop studio just down the road, and I keep driving past it. I drive past it every couple of weeks, and I go, I've got to stop in there, and I've got to see if they're going to give me some private lessons. Number one, I know nothing about hip-hop. And so I figure if I take some dance lessons in the hip-hop genre, I will learn something. And maybe the people at the hip-hop studio will have some song suggestions of hip-hop songs that are actually clean enough that we can use them um, in a classroom setting. So if anybody wants to share in the chat any hip-hop songs that they've used, that would be wonderful. I met a young man from Calgary, and I need to go through his... 120 or 130 songs he's recorded and find the ones that I think are clean enough for the class because he's he's hip hop slash rock, um, some Afro um, beats in there. He's a really neat guy and I want to license some of his music because I think kids would really quite enjoy it. But for myself, I want to go take some hip hop lessons. Not that I'm ever going to teach any hip hop routines, but I just want to know. I want to know a little bit more about that. Um, my son is a swing dancer, and if I ask really, really nicely, he will take me to the beginner swing dance classes. And that's always, I just, I really love them. Again, I'm not good at it, and I, I don't want to do this with anybody that is good, but my son is very forgiving, and that's kind of a fun thing to do. Uh, going to the pool, going to the beach. Love both. I I have um, six grandkids. I have taught all of them how to swim. I taught all my own kids how to swim. I've taught many nieces and nephews how to swim. So that seems to be my job is to pass on my love of the water to the next generation because I think it bypassed my own children. So I do want to get to the, the beach and the pool. When I do the week with the grandkids and the place with two pools, it's um, right next to a lake. So you actually get both. I, I like to listen to TED Talks. And I think this summer, just for variety's sake, I'm going to mix it up. And I'm going to listen to things that are less work-related and more personal health care and self-care related. Um, I actually did a class with Toastmasters in 2019 and really, really enjoyed it. So I want to take the, the Toastmasters class probably again and join Toastmasters and stretch myself in that direction a little bit. Um, visiting with friends and family. I love to visit. I just had uh, Donna Rodenheiser and Andy Dunker in my house for five days. And I have to say, it was so much fun to have them. They, they do what I do in a, in a very similar way. They write, they publish in Nova Scotia. So we've known each other via conferences for years and years. But we, um, and I visited them twice in Nova Scotia, but they've never visited me in Alberta. And they were, they did a big cross Canada thing and I was able to set up three concerts for them. And they, um, they stayed in, in my house and it was so fun to visit with somebody else who does what I do. All of you elementary music teachers are isolated. There's not really anybody in most schools that gets what you do, especially if you're in a small town and you don't have colleagues in other schools. If you're the only school in town, you're the only elementary music teacher, and you're the only one that is um, able to do that. I see in the comments, Contra Dance is awesome and very, very social. And in one of the Donna and Andy concerts, I met a lady who says, yes, I go do Scottish dancing and I do the Norwegian dancing. And I said, please, please send me the contact information. Because I, again, I said, are you forgiving if people don't come every week? And she said, uh, yes, we're adults. We have to be. And that would be um, very fun to do contra dancing if you have it close by. We have Scottish dancing here in Red Deer. I know we have uh, a very active, I think it's Norwegian, not Danish, Norwegian society. 
and uh, that would be fun to do. So I have a grandson graduating from high school this year. It can't possibly be. I'm not old enough to have an 18-year-old, um, but he is. So those kinds of celebrations are really fun. I've gone to one wedding already. Our wonderful Matthew, who was our game developer, got married last weekend, and it was an absolutely gorgeous musical event. And I have a niece getting married this summer. So that's going to be, again, another really fun family occasion. So summer is that break time. Summer is that time to get your head into a new space, get it out of the classroom. Hopefully you're locked out of your school and you can't go back and do anything until August. And, and uh, so that keeps you out of there. I always had access to my schools over the summer. That's not necessarily a good thing. So hopefully you're locked out and you have to do something different and you find some of those activities that are gonna bring you joy, going to make you healthier and, uh, and, and you get you benefit from a complete break. Two years ago, 2021, in the middle of the pandemic, my son decided he was going to go keto. And I went along with him. Um, I didn't know anything about it. And I wouldn't say I was probably as strict as he was, but I did manage to lose 20 pounds. And on the scale this morning, I'm actually 24 pounds down from my heaviest. And I always laugh when I see that my COVID videos because I, I am noticeably heavier in them. And, you know, you take care of yourself, you eat right. And summer is a time when you have that little bit more time to prepare meals so you can prepare some fresh stuff. One of the things that I found, and I know I got this hint from Artie, you bring your vegetables home from the market, you prep them right away and then I keep them in containers in the fridge. Then if I'm headed towards the cupboard where there might be some crackers or chips, I try and steer myself to the fridge instead and convince myself that peppers and hummus is really better than chips and dip. To be honest, what we do now is the husband and I just keep that stuff out of the house um, because if it's there, I probably will eat it. Um, we don't have enough grandkids coming over to clean it up for us. So the eating healthier, I think, is, again, something we should really work on in the summer. I don't think you should think of it as losing weight. I think you should just think of it as, I'm going to make my body healthier. Drink more water. And at any time you're hungry, if you convince yourself to drink a bottle of water before you go get something to eat, chances are, if you get busy and you're practicing your dancing or you're, you're um, doing some fun reading, you'll forget that you were thinking about eating. Most of our eating, I know most of mine, is um, just restless, boredom, boredom eating. So why would you spend part of your summer in a workshop session? And that that is always a good question. Artie and I have done the Artie and Denise workshop. This will be our 14th summer. And it's it's become like a family. There's people who have been to 10 Artie and Denise sessions. And I, I swear they've seen everything I've presented unless I've written something new. And they've seen everything Artie's done unless Artie has invented something new. But they come back. And I do find, especially with Artie's stuff, she goes so fast. I always feel like I talk fast, but Artie is faster. And I started videotaping Artie's stuff in the very first workshop when we were on the cruise ship. And I'd go back and I'd look at those videos and I'd go, oh yeah, there was that. And oh yeah, there was that. So I think now Artie has a lot of her lessons in books. She's got a new one coming out this summer called Sing, Sing, Sing with her singing scarf, her Beat Buddies. Singing scarf, Beat Buddies. Oh, it's, I'm drawing a blank here. I should have Artie on here with me. Um, but a lot of the lessons that she has done for years and years and years and it's done in a way that if you go back home from the workshop and you forget what she did with her beat buddies, you can pick up the book and you go, oh, yes, because in Artie's books, she writes the way she talks. And and so she absolutely um, will inspire you to do these cool things with your little people. There's um, four sections in the book, and I'm still drawing a blank as to the third, but the fourth is movement, fun, and games, and it's a lot of the really fun songs that Artie puts her own twist onto. So you will truly enjoy that. 
Melody walk, that is the fourth one. I take a little walk, I take a little walk, I take a little walk, and then I stop and sing. So the kids march around the room, and then she has them sing songs. And we've got all those recorded. In fact, we'll have a whole melody walk um, recording with all of Artie's songs strung together. So that will be, that will be fun. So again, the, the summer workshops, it's, it's like family. It's my old friends coming together. We have teachers who've retired. They don't even teach anymore. And they still come just because they want to get the visiting and the fun and the, the, the friendship and keep that, keep that going in the summer. Um, I, I just think that the music teachers are isolated and the opportunity that I had to visit with Donna and Andy. Donna was a music teacher for 35 years. She and I have very similar training. She's done her Kodai levels. She's done lots of choral pieces. She's taught recorder really well. And she's been out doing lots of workshops. Uh, the one thing she does that I've never done is she does concerts, which is cool. But, you know, five days was barely enough to visit back and forth and scratch the surface of the things that we have in common. And in the Artie and Denise stuff, you'll find that the breaks in these sessions are just as much fun as the sessions themselves because you get to visit with teachers from all over the United States and we have some Canadians coming this year. And it's, um, it's just fun to see what the situations are like for people in other places. Um, I like hearing about the successes that, that teachers have had. I get lots of emails and they'll say, oh, that lesson worked really well. One lesson that I heard lots about was the middle school lesson that uses Bruce Springsteen's Oh Mary Don't You Weep No More. The teacher commented that was her favorite lesson of the whole year. And I hear about lots of those successes in person when I'm at the workshop. So I don't teach full-time anymore, but I have been doing a lot of teaching. Last Thursday, I taught grade four here in Red Deer, then drove, or drove to Calgary and taught grade one in my daughter's classes, co-teaching with her, and that was really fun. Um, and it keeps me honest. It, it allows me to walk into a workshop and say, I know the kids like it because I did it with them three weeks ago, and they really enjoyed it. Um, so uh, teaching... Full or part-time, I love meeting with other teachers at the workshops. So what is one of these PDs like? Uh, be prepared for exhaustion, number one. This year, we've got a, a full, a very full two days. We've done two and a half days the last couple of years, and we've cut the half day out. Um, so it's two quite full days. So it is exhausting, but it's also exhilarating. Um, I find even myself, having seen most of Artie's activities in the 14 years prior, um, I still learn. Every year, there's something new or a new twist on it that she didn't think of it, be it before. It is truly fun. And I think all of us need more fun in our lives. It's um, one of the TED Talks that I love and I've listened to several times is on fun and how fun is connection and we have that with the other music teachers and it's um, a shared activity and there's flow and that's what you'll find in these workshops if you're doing one of my singing games there's flow because we're all doing it together if you're doing one of Artie's drum activities there's flow because you have to concentrate like mad to keep up and and do all the activities um, one nice thing about the Artie and Denise workshop versus uh, others you may go to. You don't need to video. And I do a lot of video myself when I'm in workshops because I know I will never remember without it. But in the Artie and Denise, we set up cameras, we video the whole thing. And we, we actually have 13, not 14 years of video because I missed, somehow the, the video from Nashville got lost. But um, I have all the videos from all the other years, and it's been really, really good to go back and see what we taught over those years. And it's it's nice for you because then you can be fully present in the workshop, and you know that there's going to be a video that you can watch later. Anybody who comes live 
has access to the recorded videos for 12 months. And anybody who does the virtual only can do the virtual during the two days that we call it the virtual conference, because those are the two days where Artie, John, um, Mr. Frank, and I will be on to do question and answer. But at the same time, um, you can go, if you're busy those two days, those two days happen to fall on a niece's wedding or a trip that you've already got booked, you can do those recordings anytime during the 12 months. So the recorded is nice and we will continue to do this because um, it, it's just impossible for everybody to travel. Travel's gotten very expensive, less convenient, and so having the virtual as an option I think is good. Um, number four reason, I love the teachers that I've met at the Artie and Denise workshops. There, there are some teachers that again, like Dawn and Andy, I've met her at conferences. I was very happy to have her come and stay in my home for five days because we've made that connection through through music. And I haven't ever had any of our Artie and Denise participants to come stay in my home, but if the time ever worked out, probably. I'm actually going to see one of them in Banff on July the 3rd. She's doing um, a trip, she's from Atlanta, and she's doing the train trip across Canada, and she gets a night in Banff, and I'm there the day before. So I'm gonna try and get a room for the extra night and stay so that I can visit with her. That's the kind of friendships um, that we make doing these workshops. Um, I always come away from the Artie and Denise workshop feeling like I've learned as much as I've taught because people will come up to me in the breaks and the people will come up in the breaks and they'll say, oh, this is what I did with this. And they have a completely new twist on something. And if I try it out and it works with my kids, hey, I've got another new idea that I can use. Um, I just noticed that Gail Congdon joined us. Gail Congdon's from Tennessee and, and um, lovely uh, early childhood teacher. And again, when I visited with Gail at Artie and Denise's, I've gotten tons of preschool ideas from her. So at least as much as I'm giving, I am coming back. Um, the number one takeaway that I hear after the summer symposium is that our teachers are inspired and excited and looking forward to the next school year. And I have to say, at this time of year, if you're still in the classroom, you are probably just feeling tired and exhausted and not inspired for the next school year. Um, but I'm hoping that as you, um, uh, those of you that are able to do the, the workshop virtually or otherwise, will feel that sense of inspiration. Now, I thought all of our people that are here, I am gonna give you a sneak peek at the handouts book. So this is the actual handouts for the conference. You've come on the webinar, you get to see it first. So all sessions and Q&A will be recorded and available until, it says January 2nd, 2022. That's wrong, that's in red, because we're gonna change that. It'll be August 2024 that you'll be able to see it. So we are starting at 8.30 and we are going till six. So it is kind of a long day. We will make sure and keep our closing remarks really fast so that you can do peer-to-peer -peer visiting at 547 instead of listening to us till six o'clock. So Artie does a wonderful welcome. She always, we find out where everybody's from and what kinds of things that they teach. And then we have sessions. So first one I'm doing is love to listen. And I am so sorry that I don't have books in hand to show you but I have written two children's storybooks. New venture for me, I'm veering off in another direction. I'm gonna go visit libraries instead of schools and do readings of the book. One is Carnival of the Animals with my poems. Ogden Nash's are under copyright and they're maybe sometimes a wee bit over the head of the kids. So I've written my own poems that are really child-friendly and embody, um, the kinds of movement and activities that I do with Carnival of the Animals. And the other book is Peter and the Wolf. And the Peter and the Wolf, um, we've done, I call it a gentle retelling. Some of you may take exception to this, but we've taken the hunters out and they have become photographers and we've taken the rifles out and they have become cameras. I, you know, I know there's people that are in hunting communities and that's the norm, but 
I just didn't want to include guns in this version. So there's no guns, but the cameras are very loud. The cameras are played on the timpani. So my love to listen section is going to be a lot of my activities that I do with Carnival of the Animals and Peter and the Wolf and some new ones. Um, I've got a new activity for Bach air on a G string and I've got a really cool Bach. Um, it's a piece. It's a gig by Bach. And I retell and act out the story of the Emperor's New Clothes to it. It sounds very regal and it seems to fit the Bach really well. John is doing songs in the key of me, so he'll introduce you to some new songs. He's going to do some choral reading, which will include um, a couple of my pieces. And then he's going to take us on a journey around the world. I'm doing rhythm instrument fun with some edited and new activities um, in the rhythm instrument fun. So we'll be doing the uh, rhythm flashcard hunt. We'll be doing the four corners rhythm so you can see how I do it. When I asked teachers how they did four corners rhythm, I got three videos, three completely different ways of doing it. And I'm pretty sure that everybody adapts that activity to their own purposes. So I will show you one way of doing it and then you go make it your own. And then Artie's going to do sing, sing, sing. This will be Melody Walk, Beat, bug, beat Buddies, Singing Scarf, and her, her um, Songs for Fun and Movement. Then on Tuesday, John's going to do our welcome, and I'm going to do Engage to Energize. And I'm going to do a little bit of this in, in, in this webinar because I'm a big believer. We do, we do some music. So I'm going to take you to Music Play Online, and I'm going to take you to the song We Love to Sing. We changed it <clears throat> because it's um, the original song was um, Hallelujah, 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 Praise ye the Lord. I learned it in a Bible camp with my kids. It was really fun. But I did Hallelujah, 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 we love to sing. And we still have schools that are a, re a little reluctant to use it because of the Hallelujah. So we have re recorded it and it will be in the website for next year as. Dooby doo, dooby doo, dooby doo, dooby dooby. We love to sing. So I'm going to invite you to do this with me, and <clears throat> choose one part, either the allalu or the we love to sing. I'm going to stand up on the allalus. You stand up on the we love to sings if that's what you want to do. So first time slow. This is me. Allalu, allalu. And I sit down. Now I go up. And the other side stands up. They stay up. On the last we love to sing, everybody joins in. Now faster. Dooby doo, dooby doo, dooby doo, dooby doo. We love I forgot to stand up. Dooby doo, dooby doo, dooby doo, dooby doo. We love to sing. We love to sing. Dooby doo, dooby doo. We love to sing. Dooby doo, dooby doo. We love to sing. Dooby doo, dooby doo. And everybody sings the We Love to Sing. That's been a favorite warm up um, for a long time. It's in Music Play 5, and it will be even better with Dooby Doo instead of Allaloo. Um, you can see my kids doing it in the kids' demo. So let's keep going in this handout. Um, Artie's doing the power of a prop. As, as you know, Artie travels with two honkin' big suitcases full of stuff, and they're always, always fun. It's always fun. And it's stuff that's not hugely expensive to acquire. Eventually, you have a classroom like this that's just full of all kinds of fun things. Um, I actually have to build more shelves to be able to do mine. Mr. Frank is going to do bucket drumming, which he does really well. I saw him last year, and he was wonderful. John's going to do the musicals. I am going to do Assess Without Stress. Um, I did a newsletter on it a couple of weeks ago. I've got some ideas for really easy ways. You assess in class, 
you mark in class, you don't take a bunch of marking home. Um, Artie's going to do fun with fundamentals. She has her own take on teaching theory, and it's always really, really good. So I will give you a quick look at Artie's um, percussion discussion. I haven't done her Tony Chestnut hoop groups. I haven't done her rhythms and rhymes. And I've done her syncopated clock, and it's really fun. I really enjoyed that one. The meter mashup using large drums. I don't believe I have ever done this either. So that that is brand new for me. I have never, I've never done this with Artie. So she's doing songs that are in uh, two, two beats per meter, songs in three beats, songs in four, and we will see what she has to do. The Lemonade Crunchy Ice, I have seen Artie do it once, and I've actually presented it at a workshop, but I didn't feel I did it justice. Um, interesting side, a side note, Lemonade, I learned a clapping version of it when I was in Belize, my last trip to Belize working in schools. I asked the kids if they had any games to show me, and um, they showed me one that was kind of similar to that. I'll have to find that video before Artie does it. Quadraboom, love it. That's a very favorite activity. And if you're looking for some performance ideas that your upper elementary will love, they will. Rocky Mountain, haven't done this one before. So there's all kinds of new ones. Here's the Sing Sing, the stand up sit down song that is on MK8. One finger, one finger kept moving. We recorded it with the kids and we did two recording sessions in May. Kids loved it. So I know if our recording kids, age 8 to 12, loved it, yours are going to love it too. Little Cabin in the Wood, we have in the Singing Fun and Games book. And I really like Artie's take on it. Again, it's got a hunter. And in the traditional version, the hunter shoots the rabbit dead. Artie's got a much kinder way of singing that song. And it, um, it keeps a song in the repertoire that always was a really cute little song. Horse Went Around is fun. We've got that in the Singing Fun and Games book. Walk Old Joe. We did Walk Old Joe with our 8 to 12 year olds. And to give them the feel of what it was going to be, I hauled my stick horses out. And I said, you can do it singing if you want. And I did not expect the 12 year old to be doing stick horses, but they were fighting over them. So everybody loves that. It's intended for lower elementary, but you know what? If you bring your stick horses out, I bet your little, uh, your older ones will like it too. Shoe a little horse, another good one. And I'd completely forgotten what Artie does at the end of that until we recorded it. So that's going to be a good surprise for you. Um, Scotland's Burning, again, Artie has her own take on this. I do it as a movement round. Artie has a completely different way of doing Scotland's Burning, which is very, very fun and involves buckets putting out fires, which we could use a little help with that in Canada right now. So here's Artie's power of the prop. If you haven't ever done her Who Let the Dogs Out with Plates, that is super fun. Um, wake Me Up, I don't think I've ever done that. El Capitan, Sousa, mm, I've maybe done it about... 10 years ago. Count on Me, the pop tubes is fun. Her tray pat from the Nutcracker is really fun. I've got a different way of doing it. I do it with scarves. Anything that Artie does is always funny. And then she's got Shoe a Little Horse. And finale uh, to the William Tell with parachutes. I don't think Artie's done this in our workshop since we were on the cruise ship. And she will probably tell this story in the workshop. But when we did it on the cruise ship, they put us in whatever rooms they had available. And so the day we were doing Artie's parachute thing, we were in a bar and it had a light up floor and a light up ceiling. And it was only about nine feet high or seven feet high. It wasn't normal, a normal height ceiling. So when she lets the parachute go at the end of it, it goes up and it sticks on this lighted ceiling and it just looked super neat and super fun. That's one of my favorite of Artie's activities. Another one that I've, I'm going to ask Artie to put in, and maybe she'll have room for it if she's got you a little horse twice, would be her um, lesson on Alexander and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day that's in Mallet Madness. I've taught that lesson, and I've taught it up to age 15 when I was in Belize. And I'll tell you, it's such a brilliant lesson. Works. 
Her fun with fundamentals is going to be a lot of fun. So she's got steady beat activities. She's got um, ways of teaching music vocabulary that it's part of that beanbag game. So pass the music beanbag. Her spuddy buddy is always fun. I've seen that before. I forget how to do it. So it's a good thing I'm going to see it again. Her engine number nine is different than mine. Again, she has a cute little twist on it. Uh, the Very Lonely fly Firefly. I haven't seen this lesson. So new for me. Stickman I've seen before. I love it. It's my sister's fault. I haven't seen for about eight or ten years. So that's coming back. So here's my love to listen. And I talk first about the intercom listening and the listening logs. And then the box fight for freedom and our two new activities to do with the Bach excerpts. The one is air on a G string. You can do it just with hands if you want to. The move it way that John Fire Robin does. I like it with the white paper plates because they just look gorgeous. And I think we've captured the feeling of the music really well. The other thing I will do with that <clears throat> is I will do mirror movement where I move and you copy my movements. That's really fun for the kids too. Dramatizing Emperor's New Clothes. And here is a sneak peek at our Carnival of the Animals book. Very excited. We'll be doing probably a whole webinar on it next year. So this is the Royal March of the Lions. So those of you who have done my Lions on Music Play Online, I kind of show the activities, but we'll, we'll do it here so you can see. Um, when I taught grade one last week in my daughter's class, I did this with the kids. First class, we acted out first, then read the poem. I decided with the second class, read the poem first, then act it out. And that was the right order to do things. So I read to them and then I had them read it together. And those grade ones were good. They actually were able to. The lion is the king of beasts. A mighty king is he. He likes to sleep, but when he wakes, his subjects want to flee. Quietly, he creeps along, looking for his prey. If I hear him coming, I'll be sure to run away. Quietly, he creeps along. Quietly, he prowls, slinking through the grass until our mighty king growls. And that's how I do the growl. So you get a sneak peek look at the book. And I'm going to go to units. And I'm going to go to listening. And the carnival, the animals is here. I will get a new kids demo made because this one isn't as uh, polished as I would like. Kids demo is pretty good. But we're going to use the listening map for it. And so what I had to warn the kids about was when you're slinking through the grass, you need your hands to show the growl so you can't be on all fours. They had a big music room and they wanted to be on all fours. So we're going to be sleeping in the first part. But when the music gets loud, it wakes the lion up. And then the trumpeters do a fanfare. So we're going to pretend to be the trumpeters and play the fanfare. Then we're going to slink through the grass, just like the poem said. And when we hear a growl, we're going to show the lion's big mouth with our hands. We're not going to say it. We're going to be nice and quiet so we hear how loud and quiet it gets. So let's see if we can do that together. Sleeping first. If you put your cameras on, then I can see if you're doing it too. And I do a couple of little snores or gentle breaths. Trumpeters coming. Slink. And with the kids, they can do the micro beat instead if that's easier for them to find the beat.
And if you are doing the whole unit, there are those lovely extra resources for you. Um, uh, the, the, mini, the mini books are wonderful. So there's a worksheet for each. Um, I see that Serge has translated them into French. But um, if you want to save paper, you can do the mini books. And the mini books are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I'm going to go up to the top. Here's the mini book. So there's two on a page. And so you take them to the copier, copy them double-sided with two left staples. And they come out. And all you have to do is take them to the paper cutter, slice in half. And you've got two mini books. It's absolutely fabulous. And I keep them in this little studio. So this is the mini book for Carnival of the Animals. And this is the mini book for Peter and the Wolf. This likely will get redone over the summer because we have those beautiful new illustrations in the storybooks. So we'll make sure and um, do that. So that is my handouts booklet. That's my handouts for my listening fun section. It gives you a few of the, um, the movements, shows the mini book, and then we go on and we do a bunch of activities from Carnival of the uh, Animals. So if you wanna see how Denise does it, either the virtual or the um, in-person would be great. And here's the Peter and the Wolf storybook and some of the mini book of it. And then I had to do a cup game. I love cup games and I've got some cup game hints in there. Um, in the Hall of the Mountain King, if you've never done this, it's wonderful. I have to put it, I, we do have it on Music Play Online, but we need to put it in the listening extras. So it's a little easier to find. So my rhythm instrument fun is a great session. Um, I'm doing more with instrument families than I've done in the past. And we've edited some of the songs so that they use all the instrument families because when I wrote them, I didn't use all the families. So that doesn't make sense. So we've got drums or drumming and this is the one where we've done new recordings for them. And I show you how I do my relative note values and some activities, move to the relative note values, play the relative note values and bounce balls to the relative note values. That's always fun. And I'm going to introduce some of Kristen Luco's ball bouncing activities. Her activities are going on our website. So they're going to be in units, programs, and I'm ex really excited to have them. She's got a really good patriotic routine that we will have available for November 11th. So if you're thinking of what you're gonna do for November 11th, I don't know if I can learn it to teach it, but boy, I, I probably should. Um, I'm gonna show some of that rhythm practice and I'm going to show some of the simple storybooks that we have right on Music Play Online that you can copy out and print yourself and add sound effects to with instruments. I like to do my stick notes if you've never done them and I, I need to put those stick notes, note to self, I will put stick notes into rhythm practice so that that is available. When I do these webinars, I always remember, okay, I should do this, I should do that. But I will put that into Rhythm Practice. Um, rhythm Hunt is in Rhythm Practice now in Ta, TT, and Rest. And the Solfa Practice is in So and Me. But we've created flashcards now for all the Solfa levels. Lisa has been working on this since February, and she's got these beautiful new half-page flashcards that you can print out. I like to print them on different colors of cardstock so I can keep them separate, um, and we'll share those. Four Corners, I mentioned Poison Rhythm. We'll play Poison Rhythm with website, without, don't need it. And here's the Rhythm Hunt worksheet that I added, so you've got it. So here's the Engage and Energize ideas. Um, I've got some new ways of playing the name games. It was interesting because when I did the name games with my daughter's classes, I, I didn't know who they were. We did this one. So, Denise, Linda, Danae, that's what I've done. Her kids echoed and I thought, wow, what a great idea. Then I hear it twice. So I, I'm going to change this activity and I'm gonna go, Denise. And then everybody says, Denise, Linda. 
and then we all say Linda. That way you've got two chances to remember that name. Um, you're all much younger than I am, and my memory is not so good anymore. So getting to know those students' names is really, really hard, and it's so important that we do and learn how to pronounce their names. So if the kid says their name first, we get to hear the child, and then if the class says it, if they say it wrong, we'll figure it out. So get to know your students, welcome them. Some ways, um, not just names, but ways that you can get to know your kids a little bit. Some suggestions. I don't love supervision, especially when it's 25 below, but you know what? That's a really good way to get to know your kids. Attention getters and focus activities can never have too many of these because if the more you mix it up with the kids, the more you do something that's unexpected, the more they pay attention. So my one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And I have to remember to ask Lisa what she did because she had a new one. Um, I've got a wonderful video of a teacher in Australia working with a, a young class of Indigenous students, and honest to goodness, he had those kids eating right out of his hand. And I think seeing other teachers model what they do as warm-ups and energizers is really handy. Um, body percussion warm-ups, but let's mix them up. I got to see Manju Durai Rash at the Calgary Orf chapter this year, and she did a really fun body percussion activity. I'm crediting her. I'll have to ask her permission to use it, but I'm pretty sure she'll say yes um, because I'm giving her credit. And, and she just, it was really, really neat. And it was complex enough that it's going to keep your sixth graders watching. And those sixth graders are always hard. I've got some watching games. Um, one that I've seen my daughter do in rehearsals that I really like is she starts with her hands out she moves them slowly, slowly in. And the idea is we all clap at the same time. That was a really good watching activity. Uh, my friend Carrie Heisler, um, actually it wasn't Carrie, it was Jen, Jen Forsland. I always called it finger fun. And she'd do little funny things with her fingers. T -t 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 -t. Woo! T -t -t. Woo! And the kids would echo. So. Again, she did it with her middle school choir. She did it with the elementary choir, and they all quite enjoyed it. Um, engaging vocal warm-ups. I'm going to bring some of my bobos down with me. Um, sulfur poison melody, another really good engaging activity. Uh, slide whistles, follow the flashlight, toss the bean bag, shape cards, and I hope we have new shape cards on the website by then because we just made a new set for Artie for her new book, and so we will make some new ones for our website. And movement tricks to learn um, lyrics and some other tricks to learn lyrics, especially as you're getting ready for the concert and they've done that song 72 times and they don't want to do it the 73rd, um, finding some, some things that work well. So ways to make feedback better, and ways to make transitions, learning activities. I have had huge success with make me a circle, make me a circle, make me a circle while I count the beat. One, two, my daughter's kids got into a circle in three seconds. Second class almost did it in two. Um, but that is a really good one. I made up a little, find yourself a partner now, a partner now, a partner now, find yourself a partner now while I count the beat. One, two. So again, finding a partner, making a musical activity of it. I have always done, and I've never written it down. Take a partner, follow me, follow me, follow me. Take a partner, follow me, follow me around. And I lead a circle of partners, and we end up with a double circle. And it, it works really well. So give kids something to do while transitioning. Um, give directions in a musical way. And I, um, I have... I think a re I really like my set of instrument rules, but if you teach it with body percussion, it makes a lot more more um, it makes it a much more musical activity than just talking it to the kids. 
movement breaks. So we just did We Love to Sing and we're gonna do it with Dooby Doo instead of Olaloo. And I've highlighted a few that I want to do in the workshop, but these are all really good ones. I always have a hard time picking out what we're going to do. So the ones that I'm highlighting and doing will include the music in the handout. And you can see the Dooby Doo words are there now. Uh, the Dum Dum song, if we have time, we'll do some of the 13 variations of the Dum Dum song, that's fun. Assess without stress. As I, as I said, I talked about this in um, a workshop a couple of weeks ago, and um, the assessment piece is important, but let's make it as easy as possible. So we've done the national standards correlations, they're in the lesson plan overview, and if you plan your year out ahead of time, take, take my year plans and then cross everything out and make it your own. Choose what songs you want to do. So this is what I do in grade two. For September, I do Engine Engine and Obwazana for beat. I do Obwazana to teach um, ties. And I do Falling Leaves to teach half notes. But Falling Leaves falls in October. So that's my October, November beat and rhythm. In November, we're practicing ta, ti, ti, ties, and half notes. And we'll do some rhythm races and dictation. December, we'll do peas porridge hot. And I will do dotted half note with them. In January, we're practicing. And we do lots of practicing. And some years, it makes more sense to do the rhythmic elements in the fall and more of the melodic elements here. So again, I wouldn't take what Denise says as gospel. I would go through and do it for what works for you. I saw my kids twice a week, sometimes three times a week. If you only see your kids once a week, you can't do as much. So you need to, if they're only giving your, you your kids once a week for 30 minutes, don't beat yourself up if you can't do everything on here because that was intended for at least an hour a week. Um, so outcomes, assessments, activities that you can use. I love these activities for assessing beat. This is for the older kids. Um, get Sigokamem as older kids, although I can do it with littles too. And then um, assessing rhythm. Here's the rubrics. And I've got alternate versions in case um, there's some, some people don't like the soda cracker in Ikabakaboo, but I, I believe that this round or this little verse came from the UK at the, around the same time that the saltine cracker was invented. So I don't think there's anything derogatory in it, but if you feel uncomfortable using it, here's an alternate game for you. And then I'm going to show you how to compose with the song, um, song sorts, and we'll actually do the composition live. And here's other methods of composing and other assessments. So the assessments, uh, we're actually gonna do it. And we've got some more four corners in there. And then assessing tempo. Those are Artie's posters from her Singing Fun and Games book. Assessing pitch, assessing timbre, assessing form. I can't do everything in a one hour session. There's too much there. But I will certainly highlight the activities. And these are, uh, again, using Artie's idea that she introduced with John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt probably 14 years ago, and I loved it. Different kinds of form and form cards. Those are on the website in units, theory, form. And I use those, again, it's kind of an Artie idea where you, you get the kids to hold up when they hear the A, when they hear the B, when they hear the C, when they hear the D. Good way to informally. <clears throat> assess. So there's that. Um, here's John Jacobson's songs. He's, we're going to have a handout for those. And then Mr. Frank. I'm not sure what he's doing, but it's going to be fun. I know what he did last year was really, really good. He's a really fine percussion teacher, and I learned lots from him. And I can see from his rhythms here that we're going to learn lots uh, from Mr. Frank. Oh, and advanced rhythms. Okay, so we're getting into stuff that I would do with sixth grade. And then the ticka tees, that's my fourth grade. Ticka ticka taws are my third grade. So you can see we've got lots of the handouts there now, and more is coming. There was one question, Denise, about the scope and sequence. Would you be able to show us how to find those? So if I go into lesson planning, make sure you're logged in as a teacher and not as a student. 
in the overview of lots of music um, advocacy posters, equity and diversity. If you ever have a question, why did this song disappear? Look in this document and it'll tell you why. Here is scope and sequence for K6. Here are the What We Learn posters. I really love those, English and French. Um, here's sub information. Here's the year plans. And we will make year plans in Word. We will make our format in Word so that you can create your own year plans based on what, what you want to have. Right now they're PDFs and unless you have a PDF editor, you can't manipulate these. But I certainly would use these as a starting point if you're building a district curriculum and then just make them your own. Month outlines I find really useful. We need to go through those in the summer and <clears throat> make the changes to reflect what's changed since the learning modules were available during COVID. Because during COVID, we, we didn't include all the games because kids were home. Now we're putting the games back. So we have to update those. Here's storybook lessons in music play. Here's our national standards. And these are really, really useful. If I go to grade two, um, in the national standards, I've got their standard, my I can statement. And so I've really simplified it to a, a child-like level. But where they start talking about concepts in the national standards, they don't talk a lot about concepts. With limited guidance, listen to, sing, perform, and respond to music concepts, such as pulse and melodic contour. They've really left that open-ended, and they've left that to the states to decide what to teach, to the teachers or the districts to decide what to teach. So I have put in here the I can statements for what I feel is important in grade two. If I make this bigger, I'd have a better chance of seeing it. So concepts that are must do's for me in grade two is I can keep a beat, I can show or tell if music is high or low, and eventually that becomes so in me. I can show or tell if a, a melody goes up or it goes down. We do that really well in uh, Wild Donkeys, Carnival of the Animals. I can tell if music is fast or slow, loud or quiet. I use Smoother Bumpy for Staccato Legato in grade two. I can tell when the music is the same or different. That's form. A, if it comes again, it's another A section. Um, I can identify types of voices. I can identify and class, uh, classify classroom instruments. Orchestral instruments, I typically start in third. But if you start them earlier, put them in earlier. I can tell how music makes me feel. So then I give some examples of questions we could ask. And then here are the correlations to what's in music play. All these songs are good for assessing beat. These songs are good for differentiating beat and rhythm. These songs are gonna be good for teaching Ta and Titi. Rest is gonna be introduced here. So these national standards actually give you a searchable index of concepts in each grade. And all you have to do is go there, download, and you've got them. And then I can open up that PDF and I can search it. So if I'm looking for something, I hit Command F, I'm looking for Dynamics. And it should go to the spot. Oh, there it goes. It just took it took a while. Okay, so if I'm looking for tempo, it'll go to all the places that have tempo mentioned. So that's one way of searching out where in music play the specific concepts are taught. If you follow the lesson modules, you will have taught them all by the end of the year. Um, but if you want to put together your own sequence, that's good too. Okay, any other questions for me? Um, it looks like that is all of our questions from the chat. Okay. Well, I hope those of you that are on break are having a wonderful break. And I hope that those of you that are still in school, hang in there, hang by your fingernails. You'll, you're going to make it. You'll make it through to the end. Um, one thing I was going to mention, honestly, I would still be doing assessments even if you're not gonna count them for marks. Kids don't know that. But all of a sudden, when you do an assessment, they pay attention. So I think I would be giving a quick quiz in all the in all the grade four and five classes as soon as they walk through the door. They don't know you're not counting it for report cards, but they might pay attention a little bit better. So 
there's one more hint to get you through the last days of school. And if anybody has questions about Artie and Denise in Washington, D.C., or the Artie and Denise in um, Austin, just send me an email, denise at musicplay.ca. And I'm happy to answer any any of those questions. We um, we still have space in both workshops, and we're looking forward to meeting all of you in person instead of virtually. Virtual is good, but person is better. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, Denise. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you for sharing your time with us today. If you would like to earn a PD certificate for this episode download the accompanying handout, or watch the webinar, please go to workshops.musicplay.ca. See you next time. It's time.